Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Rent and Reflex. Disney's animated version of Pinocchio might not rank among my absolute favorites, but I do find it to be an excellent work of cinematic art. When I first heard about this live-action remake, I was initially uncertain as to how it would approach the classic Carlo Collodi story. After all, it's been told and retold so many times. So I don't really need to go into a ton of detail as to what happens in this remake. Essentially, it's about the same as the animated version in terms of structure and direction, but it does try some things new. For example, there's a female puppeteer named Fabiana who works for Stromboli the Master Showman, and she serves as a supporting character for Pinocchio. Another example involves Pinocchio examining a pile of horse feces on the street for the first time. I'm totally not kidding on that part. It even depicts Monstro the Whale as a sea monster that's part whale and part octopus. Thinking about it, I'm not sure if that combination really works. Oh, and the way this movie ended didn't sit right with me. Basically, the new ideas in this remake either don't work at all, or they work fine but don't stand out too well. Even with the extended running time, it doesn't give some of the characters enough screen time to be fully developed. Even the new song numbers that are featured on the soundtrack are mostly forgettable. As I was watching the film from start to finish, I sometimes asked myself, where's the atmosphere? Where's the charm? Where's that special Disney magic that it's supposed to have? Sadly, those elements are almost non-existent here. One of the reasons I'm not a big fan of the Disney live-action remakes is that it sometimes feels as though they were made as an excuse for actors and crew people to find work in show business. And that's definitely most evident here. For it mostly felt tagged on, forced, rushed, and a bit soulless at times. Half the time, I expected this remake to take certain risks, like possibly exploring certain aspects of the original Carlo Collodi story that are not usually covered in most film versions. But no, it simply decided to play things safe by keeping the similar plot line as the animated version. That could really leave one to question if this remake was all that necessary. I do appreciate the tremendous effort put into the visual effects, and some of the casting is quite nice. But in the end, instead of gaining a wholesome experience out of this remake, I gained a not-so-pleasurable one. Even when it recreated familiar moments from the classic story, like the donkey transformation sequence, for instance, they were mainly treated rather tame, hardly tugging at my emotional heartstrings. Could it be that director Robert Zemeckis may be starting to lose his cinematic touch? Possibly. All I know was that this remake was conceived with a stale and, dare I say, wooden execution. On a scale between 1 and 10, I give this film a 4.5. It's not the worst that Disney has ever produced, but the way I see it, it's still kind of bad, and not a remake I would personally recommend. I'd stick with the animated version instead. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes my review. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.